Hey guys, on this channel, I go through lots of tips and tricks when it comes to carving leather. But if you're new to tooling leather, carving leather, leather stamping, however you want to say it, this little guy here, this swivel knife, can be very intimidating and kind of tricky to use. Like, what's with the little spinny thing at the top, right? Let's head over the marble. I'm going to show you a few little tricks that's going to make using this swivel knife way simple and easy to do as we start getting into your leather work. Let's check it out. All right, the first thing when you're tooling, whether it's your swivel knife or any tools for that matter, is you need to be comfortable. Think about how long you're going to be sitting there and where, what you're going to be doing with your body. And you don't want to be sitting where you're hunched over for very long. You're going to be kind of hurting your back there. For me, I like a tall bench and a lower stool. So my back's straight and I, I can sit up here and tool for hours and it's really comfortable to me. Some people, I know this might hurt your shoulder. You might need to have things down lower. So it's all personal to you. There's no one right way to do it. This is just what works for me. So find what's comfortable for you and get that position to start with. And then we can start talking about the actual fundamentals of the tooling. But number one, make sure you're comfortable because if you're not comfortable, it's gonna show up in your product. All right, when you first start tooling, good chance is you're going to have a knife like this. Now this is a beginner kit swivel knife and it's a great place to start. Personally what I use um, is a knife that's that's a little bit upgraded. This, hap this particular one is a leather wrangler's knife. I really like this knife. Um, but I'm going to show you on the beginner kit knife because more than likely that's the one that you have. Now when we talk about parts on the knife, we have our blade down here, right? Now, personally, I prefer a straight blade like this. You'll see some that are angled, and that's personal preference on there. I'm gonna actually tip this up so it's at an angle anyways. But we have right here, that part that's that kind of has that, that texture part on there, that's what we're gonna call the barrel of the knife. And then up here at the top, the little spinny doohickey up there, that's the cradle, and it's just simply a cradle for your finger. So when I hold my knife, I like to put that cradle just, just kind of back by that first knuckle, a little bit behind there. It's almost in the bend of that knuckle. Then my other fingers down here, my thumb is on one side of the barrel. My middle finger and my ring finger are going to come down part way down that barrel. My ring finger is almost down on the blade a little bit. And this pinky, I just really keep out of my way. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to get it down here in the way. You can either have it tipped out back behind there, tucked in your hand, whatever's comfortable to you. But what you don't want to do is take the edge of that pinky nail and mar up your leather as you're going. So be careful on that. Keep that tucked out of the way. Now, we've got to think about how much of that blade is going to be in your leather. This leather here, I've wet it down. This is just a scrap of 8-9 ounce veg tan leather. And I didn't do a big big elaborate process for getting water on there. I took a sponge with water and it's been sitting here for a few minutes is all. But with our knife onto our good leather here, I don't want to keep it just flat straight up and down there. I'm going to wind up tipping it a little bit back so that blade tips up and I have just the front corner of that blade down in the leather. If I put it all flat and try pulling that along, I'm going to be catching that back toe in the leather. So we want to be able to tip that forward away from us a little bit and I'm always going to be pulling that knife back towards me. So I tip it up. My downward pressure is going to come from up here at the cradle and pushing down here. And as I pull that back, I'm not just bending my wrist, I'm kind of pulling with my whole arm and that's going to help keep that nice straight cut or even a curved cut, I can make it nice and smooth by locking that wrist and pulling with my whole arm as I come. But when I drag that knife back, I'm pushing down. I'm also wanting to learn how to release pressure on there, and that's going to be called fading your cuts. As I get down to the end of this cut, see this one we stopped really crisp and hard right there. Now this one here, that's called a faded cut. And all that difference is, is when as I get down towards the end of my cut here, I'm releasing my down pressure as I pull that back. 
And that's going to come in handy later on. We talk about fading things into vines and there's all sorts of things you can get real technical on stuff. But just know that when I talk about fading a cut, we're just releasing that down pressure. Now let's talk about turning those cuts. When I turn a corner, whether it is around counterclockwise, clockwise, whether we run a little bit of an S in there, it's important to keep, still keep your knife pretty close to straight up and down. Now we already talked that we're tipping it back this way, but now left to right. The one thing you want to watch out for is when you make that corner, we don't want to tip your knife to the side like this coming around a corner because what that's going to create is called an undercut. Now at first glance you look and it's not a big deal, but let's look a little closer here. See how that's actually wrinkled up there? It's undercut underneath there to where you have a flap that will pick up. We don't want that. That's going to look pretty shoddy in your tooling. So try to keep that knife a little more straight up as you roll around your corners there. Again, that turn is going to be coming from your arm turning as well as your fingers here. They can rotate in the cradle of, or they can rotate the barrel while your cradle stays still with that finger in it. Now, when you're first getting started, your cuts night might not be that smooth, right? Don't get frustrated. This is not an easy tool to use. I've been using one of these tools for over 15 years now, and it takes time to learn. At first, you might get a little choppy on those corners and may start and stop and start and stop, and your cuts are gonna look a little bit different, right? Take time with it and just work on getting consistent cuts. Once you commit to making a cut, try to follow through with that. And that's gonna keep that pressure even as you go. If I make a cut and then stop and turn and stop and turn, stop and turn, that starts getting choppy there. Okay, have you guys seen that look before? That's not uncommon but let's work together use your hand your arm moving you can bend you can turn that barrel and you can move your leather to start getting smooth consistent cuts so how do we practice and get better get you a scrap of leather and start making these cuts like this work on cuts that start deep and fade out light Cuts from right to left. Cuts from left to right. And from there we can start staggering some more cuts inside of those. If every piece of scrap leather that you had, you started filling up with those types of cuts, your knife skills are gonna improve drastically. Last thing before we go, one of the biggest questions I get, how deep do you make your cuts? That's going to be a little bit personal preference as you go with the tooling, but the best guideline I can get for you is most all your knives are going to have that bevel down at the bottom of the blade where it angles in at. When you start a cut, I start that almost as deep as that bevel. That's the best kind of guideline I've got to show you to start with. And then that fades out as they go. Now, depending on the thickness of leather that you're tooling on, if you're tooling a leather that's super thin, you don't may not want to go that deep. But I would recommend when you're starting, you're going to want to start tooling on leather that's probably a six, seven ounce or higher. Six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine right in there, and that's just referring to the thickness of your leather. But with that, you should be able to use that guideline of starting those cuts as deep as the bevel on your knife, and then fade them out to just barely dragging as you go. 
won't take long and you'll be rolling cuts in making them nice and smooth staggering those cuts as you go and be able to start filling up your leather with those types of cuts all right guys i hope that helps again if you're just getting started and maybe just thinking about getting started do it try it it's it's great it's not a big deal it's going to be a little bit scary but you can do it you can get through this this is not as scary as it seems right it just takes practice but if you like some of this detailed tutorials and want to dig a little bit deeper i have a couple resources that i'll offer up to you down in the con or in the description so be sure and check that out there is the leather life classroom which is a subscription-based class that we do a project every month and i walk you through start to finish on everything there's also the fundamentals of floral carving which is a full online course that takes you through my work setup, the tools I use, I'll walk you through each tool, and then we tool a pattern. It's, it's a really great from the beginning course as well, so check that out. Or if you just want some more free content, be sure to subscribe to the channel here, and we have lots of other tips and tricks, and we'll have more coming to you every week. So appreciate you guys taking the time to watch, and we'll see you in the next video.